Okay, so I've never really done one of these like little readathon videos, but I'm trying to get through this book. I it is almost one o'clock, so I'm going to try to read through this book. This is a book done by um, Maven of the Eventide, aka Lisa Hansen. I don't know why I struggled with <laughs> Lisa. But um, this is a YouTuber I really respect and really like. She does vampire reviews. That's how she says it. And she wrote a book. And it's the first book of a new series that they're doing. And it's a post-apocalyptic type of book. It's got zombies and vampires. I did not read the whole back. I just, just wanted to kind of go into this somewhat blindly. So far I'm enjoying it. I have read a bit. Um, I'm finding it thus far pretty good. So... We shall see, and that's my bookmark. I kind of I like it because it's purple, it has a cat, and it reminds me of Highlander. And here's where the magic will happen. My gaming room couch, which I don't want to turn around and show you the rest of the room because it is awful. And I also have my Pipeline Punch, my favorite monster, for this delightful reading day. Or reading few hours. We'll see how long it takes. halfway through the book. I'm like part of the way through the book. I'm, I'm almost half. Almost. I've got like a little bit more, but um, this is going by pretty quick, and I gotta say, like, there's this really emotional part where it's like, I don't want to give away too, too much, because I, I want to encourage people to read, but there's this part where the main character encounters death, and it just, uh, this is after they themselves experience something, and it's so emotional, so disheartening, and complicated, and confusing, and sad, and it's just absolutely creative, and utterly wonderful. Um, so yeah, um, so far I'm really enjoying it, but I, I actually, I, I didn't cry, uh, clearly I didn't, I didn't cry, but there was like this just welling up sense of dread, and sadness, and bitterness, and I share the, the character's disheartened, um, attitude, so, yeah. I gotta say, I'm, I'm not even halfway yet, and I have to stop to talk about it, but there's this character named Leaf, and he is a vampire, and I just find him so utterly charming, like, I just do, he's a, he kind of strikes me as a bit of a dandy, um, very, like, well-mannered, well-spoken, and charming, and he just has this great dialogue right now with an android. There's a lot of stuff going on in this, let me tell you. Androids, vampires, zombies, all kinds of stuff. Post-apocalyptic backdrop. It is utterly fantastic. It is a bit, like, slow going because a lot of characters had to be introduced, backstories had to be introduced, and all kinds of things. But it is pretty good world building. I am getting through it pretty quickly, so I am highly enjoying it.
Okay, so I'm a little bit now over halfway, and again, I'm really enjoying Leaf as a character. And there's this uh, android that he met, I believe I mentioned that, but there's also a human being. So now Leaf is very interested in following the android, and oh my goodness, I just, oh, oh tensions are getting bigger, there's explanations for what's going on. Mwah! enjoying this. So I'm actually that far in the book and I'm trying guys. I'm not used to doing like a all day readathon thing and I've had to stop several times. At one point I had to stop and go to the store and then I had to stop again and do some chores and things like that. So I haven't been like diligently reading but considering I usually read like it takes me a little while to get through a book. I think I'm, I'm doing pretty good. You know it actually takes me several days to get through a book. Uh, depending on how thick the book is. I'm not like the speediest of readers, but I'm finding that this is actually pretty easy to get through. Um, still very rich and vivid, um, but as far as like being able to finish it today, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still trying, so we're gonna see. Uh, we still got plenty of daylight left, so. Okay, so it's later in the day now, and I got to this uh, part in the book where uh, the main character, her name is Emily, by the way, is actually playing cards with death, and I really like this exchange. There's a lot of lo lo like a lot of little bits that I really wanted to read to you, but one of th this one's actually really great. Um, death pulls out a deck of cards, and Emily goes, "Where'd you get them? I won them. Who from? He's dead now. Oh." <laughs> Emily smoothed the edges and shuffled with care. He lost the game after all. Right. She cleared her throat, but paused mid shuffle. So that's a thing? If I challenged you to a game when you came from me, I, I, would I have had a chance? Don't be ridiculous. Excuse me? She doesn't say that. She thinks that he spoke again before she could say anything. Why would a suicide challenge me? Oh. 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 It was a brilliant... <laughs> that's just such a small but very brilliant... Br brilliant little exchange. I absolutely love it. Okay, so it is 9 o'clock, and I finished this book. Now, I do admit, like I said, when I first started the video, I had already started it a little bit. That's what I had read at work. And then the rest, I finished here, in one day. I haven't finished a book in basically one day for a long time, even though I got a head start. So, overall, what do I think about this book? Okay. I don't want to spoil everything for the book, but what this is, is it's a... <laughs> Let me read this. The zombie apocalypse was just the beginning of Emily's problems. Now the vampire hunter has to ride cross-country with death himself in this thrilling apocalyptic adventure series. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that's layered into there. There's some futuristic technology, there's uh, the apocalypse backdrop, there's the character of death introduced, and I like the way death is introduced in this, and I like how death acts, because death is not human, um, and he's purposely obtuse, or he's not purposely obtuse, it kind of depends. He doesn't really know how to converse, really. It's, it's interesting, I can't really describe his speech pattern. But, um, he's not, he doesn't quite grasp everything, and he takes things very literally. Um, so there's that, so it creates some funny and interesting dialogue. Uh, another thing that I think is really good is that there's a lot of different kinds of world-building mythology aspects to it without it being super bogged down. Throughout the story, you, as the reader, are going along with the characters who already know what happened in this world. They know what the technology is. They know about zombies and vampires and things like that. So nothing is super, like, new to them. And so everything is just introduced through them using the stuff and interacting with the people in a very normal way. It's not like an exposition man comes running in and is just like, hey, this is the thing that happened. No, the characters just talk about things and interact with things very organically. I, I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, but basically nothing is super bogged down with explanations. Occasionally, yes, you get those sections of exposition, but they're integrated into the story through character thoughts and narrative. So it doesn't feel like you're just being told information, you feel that it's actually integral to the characters as well as 
to the story at large, if that makes sense. For example, they introduce uh, androids in this. There's an android named Carol, who is a main character, and they have a vampire character, Leaf, who I mentioned before, and I love him. I absolutely love him. Just, oh, oh, such a foppish bastard, I love him. And then there's Emily, who is a zombie chick. Um, she didn't start out that way, and, they, and it's very complex how she became that way. And you have Death as a character, and then you have Scott, who's just the human. So everybody else around Scott is just different. He's not the main character, but I do, I, I kind of wonder, uh, after I put this down, I was like, I wonder what Scott kind of thinks of, like, everybody around him not being human. Um, but there's a lot of really creative and fun scenes in this. Uh, the characters all have a distinctive mode of speech, distinctive personalities. So you can tell who is who, even if there's not, like, a he said, she said type of thing going on. The scenes are set up very well, um, everything flowed very, very well. I'm saying well a lot, uh, but it did. It flew, it, it flew by in a very good way. It did take me a while because I did read this on and off throughout the day. I had to put it down, do shopping, do errands, and so forth. But I honestly really enjoyed it, and I liked the escalation of the plot. This is book one. I have no idea how many books are going to be in the series. I don't know if it's going to be two or three or whatever. But I do really like this book. I think that this was a very good start. Uh, it introduced, a, it, it just gave us a lot of stuff. The characters were very well rounded and had decent chunks of backstory. Um, I will say, even though I did say before it flowed very well, uh, there is just a little, it is a little slowish towards like the kind of beginning because all the players, now mind you again, this is book one, so I understand. Uh, where you have to introduce every character and what they're doing and where they are. So, in the beginning, it is a tiny bit slower, but that's okay. That is okay, because this is more or less a character-driven book, and I really, really do like it. I think that the character of Emily, who is our star, brings wonderful insight to her situation. She has a very strong, determined personality, a very brash way of speaking. Um, just, she's fantastic. I, I like that. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend checking this out. I will leave a link down below to where you can purchase this book, as well as a link to uh, Elisa Hansen's channel. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Carry over now.